Hi, my name is Kwekwa. I'm a pharmacist. Today, I want to share with you five surprising factors that may be sabotaging your weight loss. Now, have you ever wondered why, despite your best efforts, those extra pounds just won't budge? Or perhaps you find yourself constantly battling hunger despite eating right? Well, I can almost guarantee that you are not alone. So without wasting much time, let's start with the first one. The first one on my list is choosing low fat or diet foods. Now, when it comes to low fat or diet foods, there's a common misconception that these options are inherently healthier or more conducive to weight loss. Ironically, these products can sometimes derail diet efforts more than the regular versions. The reason lies in how these foods are formulated. You know, when fat is reduced or eliminated, something else has to be added to maintain the taste and the texture. Often, this means that a higher content of sugars, artificial sweetness, or sodium, which can be counterproductive to your health or weight loss goals, is typically what is substituted for the fat. Take low-fat yogurt as an example. Now, while it might have less fat, its sugar content can be significantly higher than its full-fat counterpart. This added sugar can lead to spikes in blood sugar levels, resulting in cravings and a cycle of hunger that can lead to overeating. The same goes for many diet sodas and snacks that use artificial sweetness. Now, while they might be low in calories, they can still trigger cravings for sweet foods and disrupt the body's ability to regulate hunger and satiety signals. Then there is also the psychological aspect to consider. When people consume low-fat or diet foods, they often feel that they can eat more because these foods are perceived as healthier or less fattening. This can lead to overeating, negating any calorie reduction gained from choosing the diet option in the first place. So here's the bottom line. It is more beneficial to focus on eating whole, minimally processed foods. These foods are naturally balanced in their macronutrient content and provide a variety of other essential nutrients that the body needs. By choosing these foods, you are more likely to feel satisfied, enjoy what you're eating, and maintain a healthy weight without falling into the trap of foods that might not be as diet-friendly as they seem or as they are marketed as. Number two mistake is overlooking liquid calories. Now, when tackling weight loss, it is relatively easy to overlook the sneaky role that liquid calories play. Beverages like sugary sodas, creamy coffees, and alcoholic drinks might seem harmless, but they are often loaded with calories that don't satisfy hunger like solid foods do. This can lead to consuming a significant number of calories without feeling full, often resulting in overeating. Take for instance the sugar content in many drinks. Sodas and fruit juices, which ironically is marketed as a healthier option, are often packed with sugar that causes rapid spikes in blood sugar levels and are typically the prime culprits. Now, these products are not just high in calories, they also impact how your body metabolizes fats and sugar. Now, let's not forget about coffee. Now, granted, a simple cup of black coffee is quite low in calories. However, when you start adding sugar, cream, syrups, and other flavorings, the calorie count can shoot up or surpass that of a full meal. Now look at this scenario. A 24 ounce cup of cafe vanilla frappuccino from Starbucks has 510 calories. Now to put that in perspective, a cheeseburger from McDonald's has about 300 calories. So you consume a cup of coffee and you're getting almost twice the number of calories you would have gotten if you are eating a cheeseburger. Another liquid to watch out for is alcohol. Now with alcohol, there's the added risk of losing your dietary discipline, leading to poor food choices and increased appetite. Moreover, alcohol consumption slows down fat burning, the fat burning process, making weight loss even more challenging. Now the best practice here will be to opt for healthier alternatives like water, herbal teas, or plain black coffee. I mean, you can enjoy a refreshing drink without loading up on extra calories. If you find water too bland, infusing it with a slice of lemon or cucumber can add a refreshing twist without the calorie hit. The next one is misjudging portion sizes. Now, misjudging portion sizes is a surprisingly easy trap that a lot of people fall into. The truth is, even if you're choosing nutritious foods, the amount you eat still matters. Portion sizes can be deceptive. And it's often the case that what we consider a normal serving is actually much larger than what the dietary guidelines recommend. Now, take for example, a dinner plate at a restaurant or even at home. It might be filled with healthy options like lean protein, vegetables, whole grains, and everything else. 
by the sheer volume could be more than your body actually needs. Over time, these oversized portions can lead to a gradual weight gain, even when you think you're eating well. Now, this is where the art of measuring and weighing food can be a game changer. It might seem tedious at first, but understanding what a proper serving size looks like is crucial. For instance, a serving of meat should be about the size of a deck of cards, and a serving of carbs like pasta or rice should be about the size of your fist. I know I may catch some flack with some of my African brothers who I know very well you like your fufu and your eba, but the truth of the matter is that these visual cues can be incredibly helpful when you don't have a skill or measuring cup handy. Another common misunderstanding is with healthy fats like nuts, uh, seeds, and avocados. Yes, they are packed with nutrients, but they are also very calorie dense. A small handful of nuts can contain hundreds of calories, so imagine what a full bowl could add up to. The bottom line here is that understanding portion sizes isn't about restricting yourself. It's about empowering yourself with the knowledge to make balanced food choices. Number four is not incorporating adequate protein and fiber. This is my favorite. The importance of incorporating adequate protein and fiber into a diet, particularly if you're aiming for weight loss, cannot be overstated. Now, these two nutrients play critical roles in managing hunger, satiety, and overall metabolic health, yet they are often neglected in many diet plans. Now, protein, for starters, is essential for the maintenance and building of muscle mass. Muscle tissue is metabolically active, meaning it burns calories even when at rest. Therefore, having more muscle mass can help increase your metabolic rate, making weight loss and weight maintenance relatively easier. Beyond its benefits for muscles, protein also has a high satiety factor. Foods high in protein can keep you feeling full longer, reducing the urge to snack on less healthy options or even overeat at meals. Then there's fiber, a component found in plant-based foods like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Fiber adds bulk to your diet without adding extra calories. This bulk helps you feel full, which can prevent overeating. Moreover, fiber plays a key role in maintaining a healthy digestive system, which is obviously essential for optimal metabolism and weight loss. It also helps regulate blood sugar levels, preventing the spikes and the crashes that can lead to cravings and eventual overeating. Number five, not tracking food intake. The practice of not tracking food intake is a common oversight in weight loss journeys and, and its impact is often underestimated. Keeping a food diary or using an app to log what you eat can be an eye-opening experience. When you start tracking what you're eating, you may notice patterns that you were previously not aware of. Perhaps you are indulging in a high-calorie snack every afternoon, or maybe your portion sizes are larger than you thought. It's very easy to forget about the extra handful of nuts or the few bites of dessert that you had. However, all these add up, and without tracking, it is very difficult to identify these hidden calories. Food tracking also brings mindfulness to eating habits. It encourages you to think more about your food choices. Are you reaching for something nutritious or just the most convenient option? Are you eating because you're truly hungry or is it out of boredom, stress or habit? You know, all of us have done that and every so often you open the fridge, you close it, you just have to take something to eat. Additionally, tracking your food intake can help with portion control. By measuring your food, even if only for a short period, you can gain a better understanding of what a serving size looks like. This knowledge can help you make more informed decisions even when you are not actively logging your meals. I must however state here that it's important to approach food tracking with a healthy mindset. It should be a tool for awareness and education, not a source for stress or obsession. The fact of the matter is that the goal is not to count every calorie for the rest of your life, you know, but to learn your eating habits and how they can be improved. I truly hope you found some value in this video and picked up at least one thing that you can implement. On your screen now is another video that I think you may find interesting. Thank you for staying through. Stay blessed and catch you on the next video.